What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Childish. We are back at it again with yet another episode of Educate and Dominate, that one-on-one interview series where we take some of the top names in a game and get their insights so we can bring your game to the next level. My next guest needs no introduction. has been on not once, not twice, but three times already, bringing him on a fourth time. Guardian 3 on the EU side for the uh, Aftermath community and the Guardian 2 arena player, the Human Dynamo. How are we doing, sir? What's going on, Childish? Thank oh. you yet again for having me. Hey, hey, you are uh, by far one of the most requested out there, uh, so we got to bring you on board. Everybody loves uh, the TOA video and the Necropolis uh, video, so uh, it's a pleasure to have you, as always. A pleasure's all mine again. You know, thank you. You are the one... Like I said earlier, you know, kind of keeping this community alive and, and doing everything to make sure the information gets out and people stay in, you know, informed, which is a big part of keeping the game going. I appreciate it, sir. I appreciate it. So for all those that are new to the channel, welcome to the channel. Um, the Yuma Dynamo, like I said it before, he's been on three times already. Um, Going to be episode 16, 18, and 22. So if you guys are looking for content with regards to uh, Trial of Ascension Hard, um, or the Necropolis, uh, Necropolis. I keep on saying that wrong. Fail. <laughs> uh, yeah, those your are epic the, fail. I know, right? There's my epic fail for the video. Those are the last two videos, and then of course the uh, initial one, bringing them on board, just talking about, um, you know, the introduction of him and, and where he kind of came up, and, and some of the unit showcases and whatnot. We have all those um, blended in those three. So um, we're gonna get right to it, guys. So if you guys haven't been following the series for quite some time, when we bring on the Dynamo. Um, we're generally bringing on, talking about a, a new concept, a new uh, thing that has been implemented into the game, um, and, and or maybe it's what you know the top, you know the meta, kind of what everybody's doing, what everybody's kind of working on, and we'd like to get his insight on uh, on you know his top picks or top units or, or strategies or what on whatnot. Last one being the Necropolis one, as we stated before. So we're gonna get um, right to the new and improved, exciting feature today. Uh, it's gonna be the Rift of Worlds. We've been waiting on it for quite some time. Um, we want to get into that, but uh, other than that, I think um, all I wanted to do, uh, first off, is probably just hit up the, the, the original topic of the aftermath of whatnot. What, what has changed so far uh, within the guild? Is there any new updates? I know you said you have two guilds rocking it over there. Yeah, we uh, we have two guilds right now on, uh, on the EU side um, and on the Asia side, actually. Um, the main guild is more focused on being competitive, uh, the aftermath main guild on both servers is consistently uh, Guardian Three, usually in the top fifteen or so. Uh, we're we we got screwed a little bit by RNG this week and got hit six times during the last hour on Guild Wars, so we're a little lower than normal. But um, Guardian Three consistently every week. Uh, the secondary guild is for people that um, may not be able to be as competitive or they don't they want to be a little bit more laid back in their their style of play uh it's designed to help them farm get a little bit stronger whether that's farm runes farm efreet summons i mean whatever it is it's it's designed to help them take a little bit of time and, and strengthen themselves up so they can uh jump into the main competitive part a little bit a little bit later Gotcha. And with regards to their rank, uh, I know that you said they were kind of working on up. Do they are they sitting in there that G one, G two? You said or? Uh, well, I mean, honestly, uh, for aftermath, we we've always been uh, kind of lax in in that department of requiring guardian players, um, and that has a lot to do with the mentality of we would rather get somebody that fits in with the atmosphere that we have, which is really friendly and almost family like, right. and is willing to. Uh, work with our our existing guild members to create teamwork for guild wars and stuff like that than it is taking somebody who may be higher up in arena but has more of an ego and is unwilling to to kind of fit in right so we we typically are only taking you know we for the main guilds are looking for uh c2 c3 players um obviously anybody that's higher we would be more than willing to talk to but it's it's not something where we're requiring Guardian 2 players to join. And then the, the farming guilds, um, as long as you can maintain Conquer, um, or, I mean, honestly, might even slightly lower than that, depending on the potential we see and, like, the monsters you have, the runes that you have already. We're, it's sort of a case-by-case -case basis at that point. Gotcha, cool. And then, of course, uh, if they're trying to get a hold of you, what's the best way to go ahead and get that done? Easiest way is online, uh, line app. And my uh, my line ID, I believe, is the Human Dynamo, just like it is here. 
Uh, yep, my user ID is the Human Dynamo, just like it is in game, no spaces. Um, add me on lineup or hit me up on Reddit. Either one, I'm pretty active on both. Shoot me a message, say hey, you know, interested in checking out the guild or talking to you about joining, and uh, we'll go from there. Good deal. All right, well, let's get right into it. Um, I'm kind of going, before we get into the uh, the Rift of Worlds, I've been looking over the units right now as we speak, and uh, it looks like you've got a couple a couple of new units running around here. Um, yeah. Has there, been, has there been any units that have been, um, you know, instrumental in your in your climb up in the Guardian 2 ranks, you know, individually? or? Absolutely. Um, the last free rune removal, I really did a big overhaul, um, and I had to give a huge shout-out to... One of the guys from Asia, his name is Is Blue. I've talked about him a couple times before. Yep. He's uh, he's sort of our mad scientist with defenses, with Guild War defenses, all that stuff. Um, he he played a big part in my success this uh, this past couple weeks, maintaining Guardian Two. Um, he uh, sort of told me that I should focus and go in in a direction that the Koreans are going with their meta right now. And I'm actually running one of the top uh, top ten Korea defenses. So uh, the units that have really been instrumental would be the uh, would be Orion, the uh, the water cobalt bomber. Uh, I know Barian preaches by them. Mine's not even fully skilled, obviously. Uh, but I'm sorry, it's the brownie magician, not <laughs> cobalt bomber. I'm fail. <laughs> Yep, there's I my knew, fail. And here's the funny thing too. I knew what you meant, but I was just like, oh, let me click on it. Let, let's see if yep. you catch it. Nope. That that guy right there, the brownie magician. Um putting him on Swift and Will. I mean, my my entire defense with the exception of one unit is on Will runes, so that that catches a lot of people sleeping because I'm running a speed defense with Will. Gotcha. Um but Orion combined with Kabila, the uh, light harpy. That's probably the biggest change to my defense um, because my Kabila will outspeed most Bernards. She's uh, she's pretty fast. 265C before all the speed and everything comes into play. That's good. Yep, and I've got the max the uh, max speed totem and a 24% leader. So she's uh, she's over 300 something with all the bonuses. Uh, so, I mean, my defense, changing my defense is honestly what's allowed me to, to go guardian. So it's, uh, Sierra, Kabila, Orion, and, uh, speed Perna, which kind of catches a lot of people off guard as well. Yeah. I was going to say you're, where is that? I think I already looked them up, but yeah, a little bit, a little bit more speed than, than most that I see. So, yep. Cool. Cool. And then on the offensive side, do you have one of your kind of go-to teams that you've been using or basically just that same AD team for AO, I would assume that. Uh, no, teams. actually, I, I rarely use that team for arena offense. Um, I kind of go for a speed clear. <clears throat> um, it really just depends on the units that I'm fighting against, but one of the uh, the go-to offenses I have is uh, Zyros Leader. Um, I redid my Zyros' runes not long ago, so he has almost 100% crit without any crit buff. Um, and he's he's been doing pretty well with that. But uh, Zyros lead, Kabila, Orion, and then Galleon, so that I have two times the uh, the attack bar boost, and then uh, uh, the Galleon to uh, to defense break and attack buff, so that Zyros can kind of clean up. Yeah, I was gonna say with 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 uh, Zyros running at the uh, in the one slot there for the attack buff, the leader skill, whatnot. I'm I'm sure he can get it. <laughs> you don't need anybody else to do damage. He can get it all done. Yeah, my high my high crit right now is around uh, fifty six thousand with him. That's nasty. <laughs> yeah. That's so kinda... um, one thing I do want to say though is is and I kind of have been ranting on this because I know Bomber and I have have kind of gone back and forth a little bit about it lately. Um, don't fall into the trap of of relying on one offense. Like I was just talking about this on my stream not long ago. As soon as you start falling into that trap of you, you can only run one team and, and that's what you rely on, that's when you start having problems because the meta is going to kind of change a little bit and you're always going to run into different units. So you have to be able to adapt. That's one of the keys to maintaining a high arena rank. Like, you know, if, I, if I'm running into Camilla teams, if I'm running into teams that have uh, mostly water units, obviously I don't want to run the Zyros. So you got to be able to change it up. Yeah, yeah, it's it's funny. You've never been more uh, perfect on that on that mention. There's nothing uh, more cool than to watch your guys' stream and to see you go in like a revenge war with somebody, and literally within minutes, 
they notice that you're in a revenge war, so they'll change their team uh, so, yep. you, so you can't adapt to it. That's the cool thing about Guardian 2, Guardian 3. They're always uh, keeping a track of the arena defense, who's fighting them and who's fighting them you know, consecutively. And if that's the case, you know, if they're farming, if somebody's getting farmed, being able to change your team so that you can mix it up and, and kind of throw them off a little bit. Because that's, that's initially what happened to me when I made my changes on my arena defense. Uh, I got up to the first week I got up to uh, Guardian, just under Guardian 2, like rank 109, uh, with with not even farming, like at the end there, not even right. not even doing arena reset. And then and then after that, you know, I'm sitting there, you know, now I'm I'm having to p- push a lot because my uh, my defensive wins are not there. So I'm sitting at like 36 or so percent. <laughs> but that first yep. week coming on board, I was like 44, 45. Um, and it's not like it's my my defense is is, is unbeatable. <laughs> it's just that people you know, haven't played against me before. And then it's unexpected of, of, of me running yep. the speed that I did. So, yeah, I'm a little bit more ret- anal retentive about it than some others too. Like I actually will keep a list. Cause like, I mean, if I, if I beat somebody and I, I know that I can beat them with X team and they're in that range, obviously I want to remember that. So I'll write down like, Hey, this is the person I beat. This is what I beat them with. This was their defense. So that when I, you know, if I see them, if they hit me, I know what I have to do to revenge to win it. So, I, I keep lists like that because I'm stupid. I guess we all, we all got our own lists. We we I, if I if I could uh, if I, I I mean I I do it on the stream here, but I ain't gonna I ain't gonna spend all the time on me. But I got myself little documents, little notes of everything that I've learned on the yep. side that I just gotta remember. And it's it seems silly, but it it all comes into play at the end. I, I guarantee it. So um, let me see here. So I, one of the things I kind of wanted to get into, uh, is definitely the rift of worlds. Uh, and, and before we get into the raid boss, let's talk about just kind of getting into it with regards to the world boss. That's just for those that are you know new to the game, they, they understand that this is just basically kind of like a single player version of being able to, you know, take a composition of up to 20 people and, and taking on a boss automatically and whatnot. So, um, what are your initial thoughts on that? You know, coming, coming in with this whole new update and then, you know, what are your, any, any kind of tips or, or tricks that you want to kind of provide for people that are looking to take advantage of all three of their, their, um, turns that they can do. Well, if first and foremost, I'd like to point out that if you go back to the Necro video, I, I in fact called it that the update was going to be rift of worlds and that there was going to be a boss that, you know, it was just, the rewards were based on the damage you handed out. So uh, yeah, pull, yeah. pulling out the, the profit a little bit there. there you go. Um, so the raid, the world boss, um, it requires units that are above level 30, you're attacking 20 at a time. Your units can't die. I mean, it's one of those where, you know, you just kind of throw them in there. They do damage. You get uh, rewards based on uh, on how much damage you do, and then it kind of goes from there. Um, the keys to this, obviously, having uh, decently ruined units. Um, even if you... <sighs> Even if you take all the units you have in storage, all like the four stars you're waiting to evolve, all the five stars that you're waiting to evolve, and you just throw runes on them, it's going to up your your rewards each time you do it. And there's really no drawback to doing the world boss. So you want to use your uh, your entrances because it's th- like three times a day. You, you want to do that simply because it's going to give you pretty much free stuff, and each week you're going to get crystals based on the amount of damage you do. Right. Um, so... Ideally, you want to have 60 six-star units, which is a big task for most players, especially like the free-to-play guys. Um, don't feel that they have to be six-star though. Like, as long as they're level 30, like I said, they're not. Your units are not going to die. So, slap some runes on on uh, on units that you may not be using as much, and uh, and get in there and, and get some free stuff. Cool, cool, and then. Um... I'm trying to think here, you know, after moving on to the world boss and, and kind of get into that raid boss, um, I feel that, um, you know, it's obviously it's, you know, r- real quick shout out to Comp to us for really doing it big with this last update. Just just a hell of an update. Um, you know, when it when 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 updates like this come out, um, you know, generally the, the the population general population loves to try to get to that content as soon as possible, but they, but they, yep. you know, sometimes don't, you know, read up on, on what they need to learn. You know, when, when it comes to <laughs> raid bosses and other you games. You mean like or, me? Yeah. Well, all, me too. Yeah, me too. I mean, I was trying, you know, we were all trying to make, um, in our streamer and YouTuber community, we were all trying to make like, you know, those first look videos that people trying. And my, my yep. initial video was, was a, was a whole ton of fails just cause I didn't know, <laughs> didn't know what I was doing, but it, you know, it was Absolutely. Too, excited, too excited not to try it out. But, um, you know, for the newer people coming on board, and um, there's going to be a lot of things that they're going to have to, 
just know right off the bat before kind of getting into the raid boss. So if, if, if you could think of one or two things to mention um, when it comes to that um, in this particular raid boss, uh, you know, what's your thoughts on that? Well, the biggest thing, especially for newer players, that you have to understand that this is this is designed to be end game content. Um, you know, this is one of those things where you you should already be comfortable farming giants B10, dragon B10, starting to farm necro B10. This is not designed for the level 30 guy who's, you know, sort of mid game, doesn't really have the runes and the units yet because the keys to the raid to the rift boss is teamwork. It's all about the team compositions. So it's it's one of those things where you need to already be comfortable and already have the units set so that you can be successful otherwise you're just wasting energy. Gotcha. Um that being said, once you are at the point where you want to start climbing and start doing the rift bosses, this is this ties into what this game is based on and, and something Comdos is pretty known for is the social aspect of their game. You know, you want to start getting comfortable with other players. You don't I, I personally will not just run Rift with any random people that I find in chat. It has to be somebody I know has an idea of what they're doing, that they're able to hold their own and they're not going to suddenly, you know, have all their units just fold and then you've got two heads to worry about. So it's it's somewhat important that you are comfortable with other players and you start building those, you know, those small groups that you feel comfortable farming in and that they're really reinforcing the social aspect of that. So honestly, the best way from that, you know, hang out in, in a channel that you're comfortable in, get to know some of the players in there or uh, something that aftermath is, is going to be doing here. We're, we're finishing up the, the details right now, but we're going to be creating sort of a raid channel where anybody looking to do the rift hangs out in that channel with two to three other guilds that have the same mentality so that we have people from, you know, two, three guilds that are all looking to do the same raids. That way we, we can kind of find people that are on that same level that we're looking for. So you, you really want to reinforce team composition and, and it's designed where you can't really be greedy. You know, one person, I know the rewards are based on damage, but all of the rewards handed out are decent. So, it's one of those where you you know you can't be concerned with taking the top spot every run. It's more about being successful than it is being the star. Yeah, most definitely. You you didn't you couldn't say it any of the better. And, and it's funny that we're we're getting into that because I'd love to segue into you know the overall team composition. There's really no way to 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 buckle it down into one sentence, but I feel like uh, the univ the universal leader skill is just one of the many things that that I know you you love to discuss when it comes to composition and whatnot. What's your take on the universal leader skills? How how do you feel they're important in, into the game into the raid function right now? Okay, well with the raid, I mean, what you really the leader skills are one of the most important aspects. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a leader a universal one. It it depends on your team comp, and, and what I mean by that is, you know, if you look at all three teams. And most of the units that you're running are wind, and one of your one of you guys has like a wind angel who's going to give ev all those wind units fifty percent more health. That's still a valuable leader skill. Um, that being said, there are some leader skills that are going to be better than others for the rift, and that's you, you know, especially as you get higher level to into levels three, four, and five. Four and five being you have to have these. Um, you want to have a resist leader whether that's a Praha or Tessarian, or if it's, uh, like I said, if it's sort of element-specific, but it covers the bulk of your team, resistance leadership is almost a must. Um, beyond that, hit point leaders, um, the the Wind Monkey Kings, um, and, and like even Veramos to some extent, although his, the Oblivion really kind of hurts him, though those big universal hit point buffs are really useful. Um, and then defense percentage buffs. Those are like the top three leader skills you'll see in the higher levels, resist hit point and, and defense percentage. Um, and again, you know, it, it it's going to depend largely on the teams you run, but you're going to not really see many of the speed leader or the damage or the crit chance because it's more about a war of attrition and sustaining the damage rather than it is trying to burst the dragon down. 
Gotcha. And when and when you say when it comes to talking about the leader skills and whatnot, you know, you mentioned those those kind of top three ones. But let's say you're we're kind of taking it to that next level, and we see that our uh, team overall is kind of based on on an element. Do you sacrifice one of those top three leader skills to be able to stack like a, an Eladriel leader skill with the heels? Plus another, you know, thirty-three percent leader skill like the Fire Monkey King, or, or sorry, the uh, uh, Absolutely. Wind Monkey King. You you would stack Absolutely. that over over trying to do like a like a balanced approach or whatnot. Well, I mean, this is this is a big example. Um, this is one of the teams that some of the guys in uh, Noviak are running to farm level four right now. Their one team is running a Praha leader, so you're getting forty-one percent forty-one percent resistance there. Then they're running a Wind Monkey King for 33, persist, uh, 33 hit point lead for everybody. The third team is running an Eladriel for 50% wind resistance because the bulk of their units are wind. So they are definitely stacking those hit points. Um, as long as it's not a universal trying to overlap with a universal little stack. So if you have that, that universal uh, hit point from the Monkey King... It will then stack with the the wind hit point from the Eladriel. So, cool. like oh. again, it's going to boil down to the team you're running. But if it's you know, there are times when yeah, you do want to lose out on that defense to get more hit points, and there are going to be times when you know if you can stack defense, it may be worth it. Gotcha. And it's funny that you say we're talking about defense stacking and whatnot. <laughs> defense is definitely one of the things that I feel as as we when we come into the game, we we rush into it. We really didn't take the opportunity to look at the raid yep. boss and, and, and what the skills all you know come into play. And it seems to be that this particular raid boss actually has um, a, a, a damage, uh, you know, a skill that's damaged that's based on, you know, the, the, the opponent's defense. So the more defense you have, the more that you, you know, you can mitigate this particular attack. So let's talk about that, for example, and then uh, possibly um, the overall composition of the of the front line and the top line, or you know, the, the back line, and, and how you yep. kind of go about setting that up. Okay. Well, I mean, the the raid boss himself. If you look at his his abilities, he does not have a defense break. So correct. The thing that kind of made defense sort of bypassed by HP for like Arena and for some of the dungeons is not the case here. So defense is actually a really, really, really important skill for for the Rift Raid boss. Um, because like I said, he's not going to be able to defense break your units. Um, that being said, you know, the more attacks you take on him, the stronger he gets. He, he kind of eats buffs at one point to get stronger. So you really, you know, you're it, it, what it really boils down to is the team composition because if you don't have all the tools you need to succeed, you're just going to be making it harder than it needs to be, and that and that's one of the things that's really going to come from just communication. You know, there are certain units that each person might have that you know they may want to run, but it's not benefiting the team overall. That's that's part of the reason I was saying get comfortable with other players that you you know you talk to regularly in game so that you can kind of get a feel for everybody willing be willing being willing to bring the units that are needed for the team rather than trying to stand out and be that one person stealing the spotlight yeah i was gonna say we got i got a couple of people that i that i bring on board that we do we are now um we, we've we've been autoing level three for quite some time but now we're you know able to auto um you know, level four are pretty darn uh, consistent. Regularly, yeah, yeah, pretty darn regularly. And and for my composition that I use to to, to rock in it, I, I'm I'm never I'm never over like twenty two percent. You know, damage done or whatnot. I have a lot more of a sustain. You know, setup or whatnot. I'm just kind of yep. there to provide the debuffs. You know, more exactly. So than, and, and and people don't realize that they don't have to bring all their crazy one shot units. If you can sustain, if you can provide the the, the debuffs that we need for your other composition or your other teammates to to get the exactly. job done, you can. It's it's amazing what can be done. So yep. Uh, man, oh, quick shout out though. We want to do it there, both of us. You know, on behalf of Yuma and Emma and myself, we wanted to give a quick shout out to Goon, uh, Rengar, and Thor, the first ones um, to be able to clear the level five. I think worldwide. Is that correct? They are the first ones in the game. I mean, obviously, I don't know about the Korean and the Chinese servers, but okay. on the on the global EU and uh, Asia servers, they were the first ones server wide to clear uh, level five. Yeah, congratulations and to you guys. That's it took cool. a lot of fine tuning for them to be able to do it. So, I mean, guys, guys that are that high up on the leaderboard and that high up in the end game, having trouble, you know, that Com to us really sort of designed it to to be tough. Yeah. 
Yeah, definitely. It's uh, it was quite hard, and I know that there was some criticism. Uh, we I recently got an opportunity to to see uh, Bomber's video as well. We'll give a quick shout out to him, Bomber. Um, Scott Fetus and Barry were the first ones on the global side uh, to get that level five done, and. You know, we had a couple, you know, the, a lot of positive comments on the channel, but we had a couple people that that made a couple comments that they just couldn't. Either they were just, you know, shocked at, at the fact that the top three, you know, the top three players, um, you know, is what it took to to get the, you know, get the job done. And they and they got it, that initial run, they got it done barely for their first time. Yep. And, and it's just a, you know, a, a quick reminder of what Dynamo already said, guys. This is this is in fact end game content. You know, you got to make sure you cover your ground on the on the first stuff. You know, you got to crawl before you can walk. I mean, it's it's. It is what it is. I hate to say it because I wouldn't. I want everyone to have the opportunity to get in there and farming level three, level four, and eventually level five. But you gotta, you gotta do the work, you know, and uh, you know, put in the effort. Well, not only that, but I mean, if you're if you're trying to jump ahead and you're you're trying to find these grindstones and and chant stones, but you don't have the runes to use them on, it's it's a waste anyway. So, right. I mean, it's it's sort of a you know a logical path to follow. You get what you need and then start farming this because it was designed. For the guys in Endgame, the, the Guardian 2, Guardian 3 guys that have already got auto teams for all the other dungeons to keep them interested. Yeah, definitely. And the, uh, you know, with regards to the defense, um, I, I, I did make a quick note here to kind of talk about that. You know, defense plays such a vital role in that. Uh, for the people that are coming up, you know, mid to late game and whatnot, and they're now getting the opportunity to look at their units, look at the runes and the staff that they want as far as putting the, the units at the front line, they're going to take a lot of the damage. What do you feel is a general ballpark recommendation for the amount of defense one should have uh, for units that are hanging out there in the top line? Um, I would really say that it varies unit from unit. It just depends on the type of unit. I mean, obviously, you know, your defense type units like your coppers, your gragos, you're going to want to have them as high up there as possible. Um, you throw units like uh, Bella up there or Chasun, you know, you're going to want a minimum of, I'd say, eight, nine hundred defense. And you, you should be able to pull that off with mediocre subs to begin with, because they're all most more of the tanky units that are going to be up front all start around 650, 700 defense to begin with. So you're, you're really trying to get a minimum of, I'd say, I, I would I would honestly shoot for like 850 or 900 as, a, as your bare minimum on any of your frontline units. Gotcha. And that's before all the leader skills and everything come into play. Yeah, no, that's when I, when I say that, that's just from runes. I mean, obviously, you know, when you when you have your totems and your leader skills, it's going to boost it up. But you know, that, that's sort of your benchmark. Just from runes is what you want to really force through. Cool, cool. Yeah, I, I've I've heard a couple of recommendations around, and, and they kind of talk about overall hanging in that twelve hundred defense. And I feel, um, you know, if you if you if you're like right like you said, right in that nine hundred one thousand range. Um, and then, you know, you get all the other leader skills and towers, you know, putting up into play, um, you know, you'll, you'll definitely get there. So good. I'm Absolutely. Kind of glad we're in the same ballpark. So, um, and, and I'll, I'll put a side note here, uh, for those that are, uh, you know, been, been kind of so focused on all these other B10, this and that, whatever, uh, for some of you guys that are actively pushing, um, in your arena rank, um, you know, it's, it's never been more clear, um, the importance of those glory shop towers, guys. So if you are sitting there trying to, you know, each etch out every day or every every weekend the uh, arena reset and you're still sitting there with level four level five towers you might want to turn it back down a notch um get yourself some easy farming targets and, and get those towers leveled up because there's that, that could be my epic fail for this video actually <laughs> there you go are your towers a little lower now uh we'll go into it just remind me later and i'll explain Ah, I got you, got you, got you. Sounds good. So, yeah, I've, uh, I personally, and and and, and so I'll, I'll put it quick out there. I know we had a couple people that wanted to get on board with the subscriber showcases, but I've been hanging around, um, you know, anywhere from Conquer three to G two, and I haven't been able to uh, find some of the subscribers in Conquer one. I am definitely Fighter three Conquer one now. So, you know, if you guys get an opportunity <laughs> to find me, you know, go ahead and do it, and we'll 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 get a video for you. For but yeah, I'm I'm all about, um, you know, really really trying to push on those getting those towers done. It's never been more uh clear now to, to to get all those towers so it doesn't matter what it is you, you need every edge you can um with regards to this so let me see so uh i think we kind of hit up you know the main topics there i wanted to see before we get into the units uh that are kind of be the top the top ones um <laughs> you know in this particular raid format you know is there any other things that you want to kind of pitch out there with regards to tips and tricks as far as the overall strategy um yeah actually there is so one of the things, and they, they were sort of really ingenious in doing this after they released Necro, that come to us really did to kind of shake things up is multi-hit units 
are not good for the raid boss. Boom. Um, you know, Necro was all about Christ. I've got to get all these, you know, units with three, four, five, seven attacks. Cause that's how you drop that shield. The, the, it's the exact opposite for raid boss. You do not want multi hit units. The reason being is one of the, uh, actually two of the skills the raid boss has increased the number of units that have attacked between attacks that it gets. So, you know, the day one, we're all bringing our verds out before, you know, these crazy attack bar boosts, and we're sitting there doing nothing but fueling up the raid boss's power. So, focus more on, for your team comps, especially the higher you get, you want to focus on having maybe one damage dealer. The rest of it's all going to be a lot of support, tank, debuff, removal, stuff like that. So, you know, when you're, when you're going into this, don't be like, cool, I've got my Verd, my Theomars, my Lynette, all this stuff ready to go. They've all got my crazy good runes. You're you're gonna It's not gonna end well. I mean, it's it's exactly what I did day one, and it's uh it's it's one of those things where you have to switch your your mode of thinking, otherwise it's it's gonna be harder than it needs to be. Gotcha. And and it's and it's great. I love that you mentioned like the one damage or whatnot. I'm gonna pitch out my my kind of number one damage as far as my composition goes, and I want to hear what yours is. For me, um, I have been generally using Theo, um, just because he's you know a hard hitter or whatnot. But I feel right. with the unit composition that I have and, and and what I have available to me as far as the units, uh, my number one pick for for myself as well as anybody else that might have this unit um, has to go to Hua. Uh, seeing that the fact that you can control the attack bar on this particular boss uh, that some people might not have guessed it. What's your yep. top pick? Um, mine, mine is, uh, it's, it's got a couple that I'll run just depends on the comp. Hua is definitely one of the top units for the raid simply because like you said, it does control, uh, the, the attack bar and, uh, you know, she, with the right runes, she can, she can pack a good punch too. So she also provides that attack, uh, attack speed slow that you do really need for the boss. Um, Another one, the Wind Monkey King. Uh, mine it has sort of a really weird build on him uh, in that he is all hit point build, but he still hits pretty much like a truck. He's got a defense break, and his passive makes him pretty tanky and gives him a lot of extra attacks because you have so many... The raid boss has so many attacks against your team that you can trigger his passive four, five, six times per time that it attacks. It's crazy. And even though you just mentioned the the fact that you're trying to, you know, control the amount of attacks, you feel that the the benefit of the universal leader skill, the defense mitigation, whatnot, still makes this a viable unit? Okay. Absolutely. That's what I I figure. There's going to be a lot of ifs, ands, ors, and buts, you know, when it comes to some of these topics there. But I like like to talk about that because you just, you know, we just got done talking about the whole um, additional attacks. So. Yep. And uh, the the sort of dark horse that a a lot of people have access to him and... I mean, everyone knows how good he can be sort of in arena, and, you know, there's a couple videos from from one of the Asian servers where he's being used to farm is copper. Mm -hmm. And here's... If you you watch a well-ruined copper sitting on the front line versus the dragon, he'll hit for 35, 40,000 with his third skill. Yeah. Um, And he'll take next to no damage because he's a defense-based monster. So, you know, there's been a couple threads on Reddit lately. Um... You know, if you put them on vamp runes, it's it's a little bit higher requirement. But vampire runes are definitely awesome for him for the raid boss. Uh, guard runes can work, rage can work. It really just depends on the quality of runes you have and what you what runes you have that'll give you the stats that you're looking for. Um, you want to shoot his defense up as high as possible. If you're running crit damage on slot four, you really need to have good subs on the others to provide the crit rate and uh, defense and crit uh, crit damage bonuses. But he's uh, he's one of the, the units really to, to keep an eye on because he's going to be monstrous gotcha. for uh, for the raid boss. And uh, to kind of throw it out there, too, since this is one of those units that is going to have an absurd amount of defense, what's your take on the amount of um, uh, units that you should have on that front line if you have somebody like a copper since that, you know, they do have that one AOE that is shared amongst that top line as far as the damage goes or whatnot? What do you feel on that one? It's going to boil down to your team composition. Uh, I personally run mostly three units in the front, three in the back, or f- sometimes four in the front, two in the back, just depending on what I'm running. Um, that seems to be the most successful, and that seems to be what most people are typically doing. 
Yeah, and, and and for myself, guys, I've been running four in the front, two in the back. I have a good amount of defense. Generally, all my units are anywhere from 1,100 to, or so to 1,200 up top, um, yep. with the exception, I think, of one. Um, but i got to work on that one. i got to ruin a place I haven't done it. But um, I feel that with that higher defense and being able to spread out that, that damage you know, throughout those four has been uh, – allowed me to basically you know get level four on auto clear or whatnot. So. Yep. But like uh, Dynamo said, everybody's different. I see – I just saw a recent picture of – of um uh bombers you know level four clear team with his you know friends or whatnot and he has a couple of people running two in the front four in the back so again it just all depends on you know what you're rocking yep so cool cool all right any uh i know we kind of hit up the juan and the, and the copper water any other units that you want to talk about that are kind of uh the ones to watch when it comes to the raid boss that maybe are farmable or something that people can get real quick well, a lot of the ones that you're, yeah, actually one, one of the, uh, ones that was mentioned for Necro and she's amazing in the raid boss is Colleen. Oh yeah. The reason being she's got a heal, which is great for your team, but her first skill, uh, reduces the raid boss's attack damage. She, she's a two star, so she's going to be real low on that list. Um, her first skill reduces the boss's attack damage. Her second skill blocks the, uh, the heal which are two of the main debuffs that you need all in one unit. Right. She's uh, She's got a little bit lower defense, a little bit lower HP, so she's one of the units you're going to want to keep in back. But, you know, she, she's got everything you need all wrapped in one tiny, cute little package. Right, right. And that's, and that's what I've kind of been seeing in some of the compositions or kind of the teams that I've been 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 going up against you know they they got a couple of units that maybe they all have tracoons or whatnot and they're hitting that glancing every now and again but there's not a yep. lot of people that are rocking um that consistent attack power debuff i feel that that's been kind of lacking with a couple of com- the compositions i've been seeing so it's good to see that since people use this one for necropolis b10 they, they can know to kind of put it in there let's let's touch on that real quick i mean the keys to fighting the raid boss are managing the amount of um Damage, managing the amount of damage you take and the landing and consistently landing the debuffs on the boss. Ideally, you want to have blo- uh, heal block, you want to have glancing hits and the attack uh, attack damage reduction up as much as possible. Um, if you can get a slow on him and an armor break, that's going to do nothing but help you. But, you know, the, the glancing hit, the heal block, and the damage uh, reduction buff or the damage debuff are, are the three big ones that you need to make sure you have up as often as possible, which is what makes some of the, the team comps so unique and, and makes some of the, you know, lesser used units like Colleen really, really shine. Yeah, yeah definitely. And that, that, that matters more and more the higher level you go. I mean, when you're on four and five, if you don't have those debuffs landed consistently, you're going to fail. So... Like I said, it's it's all about building the right team comp, making sure that you can consistently land those debuffs either between your teams or all three teams able to land a couple of them consistently. Um, that That's really the key to success here. Gotcha. And, and looking over the units again, I definitely don't want to uh, miss this kind of overall uh, category of units. I feel that another category of units that is uh, very instrumental, um, you know, at least having one, if not two, depending on your composition or whatnot, is the cleansing type of units. So when I think about, you know, some of the ones to watch or whatnot, there's, you know, without a doubt, you know, one of the number one units for farmables that we kind of have to mention is going to have to be Kona Mia for sure. Kona is amazing for this. Um, Again, a little bit squishier as far as uh, hit points and defense, so you're definitely going to want to keep Kona in the back. But being able to cleanse your unit and heal, as well as being allo- uh, allowing other units to take multiple turns with her second skill, she she's amazing for the raid boss. Gotcha. She would actually probably be my number one cleanser to use. Yeah. This, and right. and the reason for that, um, you you look at the other ones that are going to cleanse being primarily uh, Delphoi and Fedora. They're going to give you some sort of buff, whether it's immunity, invincibility, the uh, the endure buff. And those buffs will actually feed the raid boss a little bit. So it's kind of a, a fine line to walk between how much do you need that, that immunity buff versus how much stronger is it going to make him. Right. 
Yeah, definitely. And, then, and I'm so, I, again, we got to, I keep on giving so many shout outs to Compass, but I, again, they, they, they continuously, you know, set it up so that we, we, we go back into our monster back and, and pull out some of these units that we've never, we never thought we'd ever use. I mean, I still got Absolutely. my fedora. I never thought I would do it. And I, I know that Foros Nye's using it. Um, I'm looking at six star. I'm going to play around with him a little bit, even though he does, like you stated, he does provide the, 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 uh, the, the actual buffs that the things can need. I still, I'm still looking for, um, cleansers, um, and, and for right now, Fedora would be the one to do. I'll have to make economy eventually. I think it's just going to have to happen, but absolutely. Uh, I'm, I'm in the process of making one right now. Yeah. Uh, um, I- another, another unit that cleanses, obviously it's got a little bit less access is because she is a five stars. Annabelle. She does her AI's uh, a little, a little wonky on when she will cleanse, but you know, she, she has a good, uh, removal, her heal is based on attack power, so you can already start building her a little bit more offensive, and she also has that armor break on her third skill, so she's not... If you have her, she can definitely be useful in, in the raids. You just gotta make sure that it's the right team setup. Gotcha, and I believe you already mentioned Delphoy here. For all those for all those haters out there that we had the opportunity to pick HOH for Delphoy, and they chose the light, the light ninja. Yeah, good job, at, guys. We good, got a useless unit. Good job. Congratulations. <laughs> I'm going to stop raging right now, but, oh, man, for, for now, you guys realize, you know, what, what we've been talking about for quite some time. This is... Delphoy is awesome. She's great in Guild so Wars. Underrated. She's great. She's a great Theo Mars counter. She's good in the Rift. Just, again, you have to run her with the right team because the fact that she will give you immunity does kind of feed the boss a little bit for one of his skills because it's based on how many beneficial effects he removes from uh, the team that he's fighting against. So... Just, just be careful. Don't think you can just throw Delphoi and Fedora in there and auto away till N5. Mm-hmm. Just be careful. Yep. But I, I do. I have to fully agree with you on uh, on come to us. You know, really making us kind of think outside the box and pick units. I mean, I'm seeing guys on EU running things like the Dark Death Knights, which no one ever used for any reason because they were just outclassed by Darian for the most part. Right. Dark Death Knight, you know, his second skill has an armor break. He's got a block heal. He, uh, he, uh, has the attack debuff and his passive, you know, reduces overall damage just like Darian does. Darian and him are decent units for, uh, the Rift boss because of how much damage reduction they're going to give you. It's all about, like I said, it's a war of attrition. So the less damage your team takes consistently, the better, you know, you get glancing hits on the boss, you get an attack damage reduction on the boss, and then you throw one of these guys in there, and you're looking at your team taking next to no damage each turn, and it's it's a beautiful thing when it all works out like that. Yeah, and having some of these units that actually have a, a, a relatively high percentage chance of uh, landing those debuffs on the first turn are, I feel, yep. are vital as well. So I know that I believe the the Death Knights can get up to like seventy or eighty on that first skill. Uh, give me one second. I can probably tell you. I just got to look through my units real quick. I believe my Arnold is max skilled. They get up to 80%. There you go. 80% it is. Which, in this, I mean, obviously, you know, runes are a big part of this. You're going to see a lot more people running Nemesis runes, and you're going to see a lot more people running Revenge units, Revenge runes on the units that, uh, are doing the debuffs like that. So you're going to see a lot more of the death Knights running revenge to apply that, that heal block. You're going to see a lot more of the Colleen's and, and the healers, the cleansers and stuff like that running nemesis so that they're going more often. Yeah, uh, definitely. Nemesis. I, I'm so glad you mentioned that. I actually run, um, I, I just wish it now because I had to go over, uh, some, some better stats or whatnot, but I, um, I've always ran violent nemesis on, on Jameer, for yep. just random random reason, I was using them for uh, SD runs. I didn't really need it. It just had to happen to like the runes used to land on there. And and I think in my initial first clear, if I did not have the nemesis on Jameer, there was no way I can get those additional turns to reset, yep. get the immunities up, or or get my heals up or whatever. It was crazy. So nemesis, definitely a strong rune composition. So make sure you are all doing those Necropolis runs if you can to get those runes if you don't have them already. Yeah, well buddy. said. All right, so let me see. I'm trying to think. Uh, I'm, I'm, I know that we kind of hit up a, a couple of the cleansers or whatnot. Um, do you feel that there's any other category of units, um, you know, besides the, just the ones that were providing the, the hostile effects and one overall category of units that you kind of wanted to mention on there that, that you feel are, are kind of overlooked? Um, 
I mean, you want to have your tanky front line, which is going to be things like you're going to, especially at the higher levels of Rift, you're going to see things like Briand, because um, he's a great reser, and again, he's got those debuffs. You're going to see Chassoons, because in addition to the massive heals, they've also got the glancing hits. Aria, once again, is a powerhouse. Uh, she's got the glancing hits, she's got the attack slow, she's got the, the heal debuff. So hopefully everyone, if given the chance, will vote for her for a Hall of Heroes, since I know a lot of players are missing her. Um, those of us fortunate enough to have her are already running her and, and loving her abilities in this. Um, you're gonna, A lot of people are shying away from things like the attack bar buffers, but... Bella's a great unit. I mean, her heal also makes your team go faster. Um, Bernard has an armor break and the attack debuff, so it's, if you're going to run them, run the ones that give you more bang for their buck like those two as opposed to, like I said, trying to run Verd because he's going to do nothing but make the boss stronger. Gotcha. Um, aside from that, like I said, you know, it's, it's all about team comp and having a decent front line to protect the one or maybe two on the outside chance damage dealers that you're going to run. Gotcha. And what's your take on this one? I I, I, um, I was neglect. I was skeptical to mention it, but I feel like um, when we're talking about the, the the overall types of hostile effects that need to be you know on there, especially in the lower levels, um, as far as again some of those units out there, kind of like Konamiya, that are just you know units that anybody can get at any given time or may already have already. I feel like um, we'd be we'd be crazy not to mention um, the 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 two star unit Shannon, uh, the Wind Pixie, as far as being one of the only units out there that's rocking the high. Uh, uh, the glancing hit on the first go, and, and mind you, the high, you know, uh, high chance of landing. High, it. high chance of landing versus like a Jasoon who, who's like a 30, 40 percent chance, or whatever. So. Shannon, I, I haven't really, honestly, I haven't played around with her too much, uh, simply because there's so many, so many good units that you're trying to fit into one team. Sure. Um, and, and Shannon to me is just sort of outclassed by Aria. Um, Shannon is definitely a viable unit. For, for a number of reasons. Number one, as you mentioned, she's got that glancing hit chance. And it's it's a good chance. Yeah, it can uh, I, I believe it gets up to 70 or 80% on the first skill. Yep, 80% of it. Uh, the second skill, you know, decreases their attack speed. Again, a useful debuff. And her third, not only does it give your team attack power, but it also increases their defense. And defense buffs are huge, because like we said, there's no skill that the boss has that defense breaks. So... Being able to consistently keep your team's defense high is only going to make it that much easier for you to survive. Gotcha. And for for all the people out there, I know we haven't really talked about rune specific per se. I know that's like a, almost a whole other video. But you know, for maybe some of the people out there that are coming on board with like uh, with like making that you know Konamiya, because obviously that's probably going to be the top pick as far as units that you know. Hey, get in there if you don't have a cleanser, or maybe bringing in Shannon on board. What would be your 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 quick just like recommendation for like a Konamiya and a and a and a Shannon and whatnot as far as runes? Know, what, what runes should we use for those? Konamiya, um, if you can farm them, I would definitely say Violent Endure is probably the best way to go. Um, and you want to go speed hit point hit point, or if it's specifically for the raid boss and nothing else, you could actually get away with speed hit point and defense, or you know. You can swap two and four as needed. Um, the key there is going to be his his speed and getting him as fast as possible without sacrificing his defensive stats. Because uh, you want him to go as often as you can so that he can cleanse, so that he can make other units go again. Um, Shannon, I would say, and again, if she is just for the Rift boss and no nowhere right. else. Right, that's what uh, we're assuming on these, yeah. Right. If it's just for the Rift boss and nowhere else, I would probably say Violent Revenge. Yeah. Simply because, you know, revenge has that fifteen percent chance to get triggered. The sheer number of attacks the boss is going to make, no matter what you do, is uh, is going to be triggering her a lot, and that's going to do nothing but give her more of a chance of landing that glancing hit. Gotcha. And uh, violent, you know, it's a beautiful thing when she lands a glancing hit and then goes violent and slows the boss, and then all of a sudden she's buffing your team. So violent revenge would definitely probably be the best for her just for the rift. Gotcha. And what's your? Uh, and I kind of, um, I kind of, I, I do like the violent endure recommendation, but I feel that the uh, the damage that these dragons, or sorry, the dra yeah, the dragons do, the raid boss does, is so um, so strong that there's going to be a lot of benefit on that nemesis subset of the people have an opportunity to farm as well. Now, what's your take on maybe running like a violent nemesis on Konamiya if you're trying to get absolutely violent nemesis is is just as if not more viable 
Um, again, it's going to depend on what leader skills you have available. If you don't have a resistance leader, uh, good point. having Kona locked down, and, and this is kind of really, really right now, you're looking at two big units that have a universal leader, leader skill, and that's Praha and uh, Tessarian. For newer people that may not have access to those five-star units, you're going to see a little bit more mileage out of the Endure runes on Kona than you are the Nemesis. Okay. Once you start being able to pair up with people that have those, or if you have them yourself, by all means, switch to Nemesis instead of Endure, and uh, and it'll it'll really carry you through. Gotcha. Cool. That's, that's what I wanted to hear. I love that stuff. There you go. All right. All right. So let me see here. Uh, I think more or less, you know, as far as the basics of what people kind of need to understand with regards to raid bots, I think we kind of got it. Um, some of the units that are, you know, top picks or whatnot for the ones to watch are in there. Um, is there anything else you could think of with regards to units that you wanted to kind of chime in on? Yeah, there, there's. All right. There's three things. One of them sort of a gimmick. The other two are specific units that that uh, kind of work out. Um, this was brought to my attention by one of our guild members. They must be PK. Um, if you have a Joltan, the, the, uh, dark werewolf. Now keep in mind, obviously you want to prioritize landing the debuffs on the boss, but if for some reason you're not landing debuffs, his passive still applies against the boss's hits. Oh, so nice. he will reflect a ton, a ton of damage back at the boss, but it does not count towards your damage contribution. Right. Right. And so it, it's it's a kind of gimmicky way of dropping the boss's hit points real fast. Now keep in mind, even if he's got a shield on him and he's taking no damage, he will reflect damage just the same. So it's sort of a gimmicky way of of, blo- of doing that as long as he's not uh, drowned out in oblivion, which is, you know, resist is going to be the key to him not having oblivion on him. Gotcha. And I and I feel like even even for people that might have him ruined up for some other aspect, it's it's worth a try. Seeing that his his passive does allow to go defense break and then the hit point disturb. I mean, we it works can... probably level three, level four, and level five. It's not worth the chance. Sure. I mean, you, if you're if you're looking at kind of speed goofy clear level three or you know one or two, or you're just climbing up for the start, he he can work. Um, once you start getting into the four and five, though, it's it's not worth the the, the shot. Um, the other one is the, uh, I believe it's the wind sea emperor. And again, this is, this is not for everybody because it is a five star unit. Um, yeah, the wind sea emperor. So he's, he's got the huge defensive leader skill, Yep. 33% for all allied monsters. And then his first skill attacks an enemy and transfers a weakening effect from you to the enemy. Boom, uh, and that's sort of universal to all the sea emperors, but he's got the big defense buff, which is huge. So he can actually kind of reflect that oblivion and, and a few other things from himself back onto the boss, which it can be a, it can be a fun, fun little toy to use. Um, the other one I believe is the, it's one of the desert queens, and it's either the wind or the water. I've seen a lot of water ones in there. Maybe I don't know. They both had. They all had that attack power for two turns on the first. But yeah, I'm trying to remember which it is. One of them has pretty much like every debuff you need wrapped in one package. Oh, I think that's the water. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Yep, the water one. So again, huge defensive leader skill, thirty three percent, just like the the uh, sea emperor her first skill uh reduces the attack power second skill 50 percent chance and i believe it goes up to 75 or 80 to reduce the defense or glancing hit or disturb so it's got everything you need in one one little skill and then you're gonna get a sh- uh a shield from her third skill so those are those are two units if you are lucky enough to have them they will really really shine in uh in in the Rift of Worlds raid boss fights, yeah, it seems it seems kind of in general overall. If you're fortunate enough to get some of these, you know, random nav fives that people are not using all the time, it seems like a lot of them have just an interesting or intriguing kit to to, yep. to really coming on board. So it's kind of cool that that's a fact. absolutely. I think that, like I said, I, I was not using Jameer for anything. I mean, the last time I used Jameer is when I think I talked to you and we were playing around with a despair, uh, speedy despair composition for Guild Wars. Do you yep. remember that? And I do. So, and then, and then, so we after that, I I tried it out in Rudimable. 
Um, I like the concept, but I, I couldn't make it work with the, the synergy of my other teammates because I have you know my other composition set up for whatever. And so I ended up just putting just a random violent set of some leftovers just so I can clear. Uh, Sadly, dungeon. I did the same. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. It is crazy. All right, all right. Let me see. Is I, I think you, I think you got quite a few. I can't think of anything else. Um, trying to think of any. If there was any other light and dark, and as you already mentioned, the Darians, the Jewelitons. I've seen a bunch of people running uh, Beth lately too, which is the dark magical archer. Yeah. Which is kind of random because I haven't. You don't really see much of her to begin with, but seeing uh, seeing her running in uh, in in the rift, I've seen. I've seen her more places than I've seen anyone else, honestly, and I, I don't have one. I I know very little about her, but that's one of those random units that I've seen run a, a good bit. Yeah, there she is. Yeah, pretty interesting score. I know that uh, YDCB is having some fun with him on his stream on his uh, YouTube channel. I've been playing around with him for Guild Wars. Uh, it's pretty YDCB, nice. Kenneth, and Doctor Lolly have been consistently clearing and uh, level five on Asia now, also. Awesome. They're they're actually farming level five. That's awesome. That's good good for them because they can get the edge and and get those get those uh, rune, our rune upgrades or the grindstone upgrades. Pretty soon, Kenneth is going to finish his Pokedex. Also, he's he's pretty much got every unit in the game. <laughs> nice. Oh man, oh man. Let me see here. Um, anything else you can think of, boss? Only my epic fail that I know is coming. Yeah, I know. I was looking at it. I was looking at it right now. Like, like epic fail, epic fail. All right, all right. All right. So. so, talking about the towers. When I, I mean, I, I started. I would say right before the, uh, it was either the Aria or the Cases uh, Hall of Heroes, whichever happened first. I don't really remember which, but I started. I'd say two, maybe two months after the game started, and uh, at the time, I mean, I was you know, grinding out arena, doing what I could just to earn points. And every week my goal was to buy scrolls. I, for the first, I'd say two or three months, didn't buy a single devil mon, didn't buy, didn't upgrade any towers. It was like, cool. I got a fire scroll. Cool. I got mystical scrolls. So I wasted a huge chunk of my arena points. And then I started to realize that the, uh, the towers mattered. And in, this is this is my epic fail that I'm gonna laugh about, but my uh, my first mass upgrade that I did was to the uh, arcane booster tower, which increases the attack speed of your arcane tower. In a <laughs> I love it. Oh, uh, I, I currently have it at like level six or level seven, because in my mind I'm like the more often this t- this laser goes the easier it's going to be for my defense to win. Right, right. So I was all gung-ho about upgrading the hell out of that instead of what you should be doing and in increasing like your unit speed and unit HP. So I, I've dumped a ton of points into that. Nice. And as such, my towers, I mean, like I have, I now have a completed speed tower, a completed hit point tower, but like I, I and then a completed crit, but I have no... Like my elemental towers have not been touched. I'm just now doing defense and attack. So, uh, yeah, that's my epic fail is wasting a shit ton of of glory points on useless, useless things like your arcane booster tower. Mm, nice. Hey, I got one. I got one for you. Like I said, I, lately I've been always doing like I let everybody do their epic fail, but I'm like I gotta, I gotta. Got to even out the playing field because uh, people really don't know how many times I fail in life. Not just in the game, but in life uh, all day, <laughs> every day. This is bad. So um, this one's outside of the game, okay? Uh, I, when it comes to my car, I and mean, you got a lot of people out there that let, let it go to like two-thirds or half a tank. And they're like, oh, I got to go fill it up. Like yep. me, I like to ride the lightning, okay? I like to live Absolutely. on the edge, okay? And we're talking like not like... Not like uh like oh yeah we're down to like fifty miles whatever like, no I'm, I I get down to that like five like ten to five <laughs> miles whatever whatnot because I got the digital thing so if you got the digital thing you know exactly how much you know I like I'm do doing air quotes air quotes right now you can't see it but exactly the amount of time so um you know we're as as this video has been made um actually yeah as this video has been made my wife is uh, about two to three days out of of going into uh the hospital to get induced to have a baby and so we're right now you know we're in that clutch time where um you know anything could happen right here water can break at any time and we can you know we can be on the go um so 
not even six days out from the expected, you know, due date or whatnot. Um, I'm sitting at my parents' house. I think we're just hanging out, chilling. Um, and uh, my my car doesn't want to start. And so I'm, I'm, <laughs> I stayed. Actually, I think it was Thanksgiving night. Uh, Thanksgiving night, I stayed over at their house. And then I had to go to work Friday. My work was only four minutes away. So I could just stay over tonight. The weather's bad. You're going to go to work the next day. You know, no big deal. So I'm getting ready to head to work. I can't go to work because my, uh, my car is on uh, on their hill. On their hill, on their ramp uh, of their house, they got we got a pretty steep uh, driveway, and so I couldn't figure out how to, what's going on with my car. I have no idea what's going on. It was the first night. My car is a 2013 vehicle, so relatively new, and it was the first time it was ever sitting out in the cold. So my initial thought was, oh man, my my car is a pansy. Uh, it can't handle the cold. I've always been in the garage. That's the reason why I can't turn on. You know, I didn't even think about the whole gas thing or whatever, whatnot. So I go to I go to work in my mom's car. Everyone's like, what the heck is this, right? And uh, I go to work, and then they, they try it during the lunch hour because my wife is still chilling at my parents' house. They tried it at the lunch hour, couldn't get it done. And then I got back to the house, and as I got back to the house during my lunch hour, I had this epiphany of like, how much gas do I got in the car? Because I could, I, could, I could see myself not being able to turn on the car because at the slant, the 0.2% of gallon, you know, gallons left when I is slanted downward. It's not going into the into the pipe, right, to, to, to get it going or whatnot. And so, funny enough, right, I, 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 let the, I put the car in neutral, put it down, level playing field, <laughs> and, the, uh, and the vehicle uh, turns on like, like it was no big deal at all. So I'm sitting there just looking at myself like, epic fail. Man, I, I'm right there with you. I live two miles from a gas station, and I also have the digital readout, so I'm I'm right there with you on pushing the envelope. I mean, there's times when I've coasted in on fumes just because I'm living that much on the edge with it. But yeah, that's that's awesome. Nice. <laughs> you gotta love it, baby. You gotta love it. All right. So uh, next one up is definitely gonna have to be our, our, our shout outs. Uh, we got always a, a great amount of people that we want to mention to it. We already did the comp does one, but we could do it again for just an amazing. Um, you know, turn of events with regards to this Rift of Will. It's it was well worth the wait. I think it's the best way to put it. You know, honestly, uh, it's it's been one of the biggest and best releases they've had since the game came out. I mean, it really breathed a lot of new life into this for a lot of players. So, great job on their end for this. Um, damn them for making something that eats up more of my battery, but it's <laughs> so fun. But my 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 phone was already warm, right? But now it's like it's like a heater, right? For the winter times, like I don't yep. even have to buy any like heat packs. When I just put the phone to my head, I'm I'm good. Yep. Um. Yeah. They they really have done an amazing job, and I, you know, honestly, as much static as people give them over like summoning rates and all that, I really have to say that as far as a company that really listens and responds to their their players' feedback, they do a great job. They're insanely generous with all the giveaways they do. I mean, each week they do a giveaway, whether it's Devilmon, Scrolls, Energy. All you got to do is fill in info on a, a survey based on their stream. They, they really do go out of their way to try and take care of their players. So they really do deserve a huge shout out. Mm -hmm. Yes, for sure. And we got the, uh, what are we going to mention to? I think I'm going to fail right now. I'm, 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 I'm slacking here. Chat. The line chat, yes, yes. Okay, so for the for the call outs I want to do, but before we get into call outs, I definitely have to give a shout out to you. Uh, uh, as always, you're, you're you're more than grateful to to help out the community and provide this amazing content. There's there's not a there's not a week that goes by that somebody that just came on board as a recent subscriber has checked out the previous Educate and Dominate vids and see the concepts in your Trial of Ascension and Necropolis, uh, Necropolis videos and ask me when you're gonna have them back. And so again, I, I just want to let you know that. Anytime you want to come back to provide some of that content for us, you're more than welcome, sir. Your, your, your information is second to none. I appreciate it. No, I, I mean, I, I appreciate you having me back. I'm, I'm of the opinion that people should be kind of tired of hearing me talk at this point. But, to, <laughs> you know, to find out that people actually value, you know, are enjoying the content and, and finding it useful, that, that right there means a lot. Because, I mean, I remember starting this game out and, and being a complete and utter noob and just having no clue what I was doing. Right. And I remember... Uh, Cold Steel and, and Jim Hartme, those guys taking me under their wing and really showing me the ropes. So, I you know, I told, I've said it time and again, you know, you doing this series really, really does nothing but breathe life into this game and into the community because it's how people are learning to avoid a lot of the pitfalls a lot of the older players make. It's, it's allowing people to 
really bypass a lot of the trial and error and and enjoy the content and enjoy being successful in the game. I appreciate it, sir. Yes, and so um, definitely if you guys, again, haven't gotten the opportunity to, make sure you, after you get done with this video, check out the other three videos, episodes 16, 18, and 22, diving into a lot of uh, different concepts are there, but most notably the Trial of Ascension Hard and the um, Necropolis. So again, for all of you, I mean, I, I don't have the list of names. I got at least, I want to say about seven or eight people that have sent me private messages. For all of you that sent me the messages within the last uh, 10 to 12 days um, asking about Dynamo, I appreciate it, sir. That's why we're here. We're bringing you back per request. We got to have it. We got to have it. I appreciate it. So uh, as far as the callouts go, uh, we were going to mention for both the global and the uh, Europe side, uh, they both have, we both, uh, within each side of the uh, servers, we have um, two different line groups. Um, and, and, of course, a lot of the people that I brought on board on both sides are, are in those line groups with regards to the top 10 goals or whatnot. Um, for any of you guys that have been in those groups, right, and, and, and you have not gotten brought on board or whatnot uh, because I haven't been able to get a hold of you or whatnot, by all means, um, you know, reach out to Dynamo. Uh, if you're on the Europe side, or reach out to um, Bomber or, or Malfitch. If you're on the um, global side and we'll make sure we we get in you know get in touch communicate so we can get some um some new faces uh for 2016 i'm super excited to get on board this will be the last educate and dominate for the year of 2015 that will start uh -oh. out fresh i know i know it's oh, crazy. Man. The, the, the 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 shocker news breaking news no this is the last video and, and of course it's with a good reason i'm getting ready to have my son uh, here this upcoming week um, so, you know, with that, those first couple of weeks trying to get on the schedule, whatnot, as you can imagine, it can be quite, quite the craziness. So, um, we want to start it out fresh. I'm going to have videos for them, you know, throughout the week. But, um, as far as the educating dominance, since that takes a little bit more time, you know, Absolutely. setting up our schedules, we'll go ahead and just, uh, finish this one off for the, uh, month of December and then start fresh on uh, 2016. So, um, for all of you guys listening, if you are in those groups and you want to get in contact, make sure you get in contact with either Bomber, Malfedge, or, or. Or Dynamo, and then we'll make sure to get you on board, set up something for that last few weeks so we can get you on board at the start of 2016. Uh, in addition to that, I mean, anybody that's that's really interested, especially if you're into the theory crafting side of that, I mean, I know a lot of the, the top level guys. That's that's kind of what they're they're into when they're not playing or while they're farming runes. You know, ask to set up a line chat, ask to set up a group chat, so that if you do have questions or you know if you you are able to contribute to the theory crafting or you you got a fresh take on something, start a group. Get involved because that's that's really what's going to help everyone learn and get better is is the communication aspect of it, and you know you you might be on EU, they might be on global, you could be on Asia, they could be on Korea. As long as there's communication there, it's going to benefit everybody. Just uh, just make sure that you know you're contributing and not letting your ego kind of override the conversation. Sure thing. That that seems to be the big issue when when big groups come together. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yep. All right, guys. I think we're pretty much it. Anything else you want to add to Ammo? Yeah, one thing. I mean, obviously, you mentioned it. You know, big shout out to to Childish. He's going to be a father. Yay! Um, you know, he, like you said, <laughs> he's going to kind of take a little break from educate and dominate. In the meantime, I'd like to give a shout out to all the streamers. You know, it's kind of up to us to pick up the slack where he's uh, where he's leaving some big shoes to fill until he's able to get things going again. So it's kind of up to us to to get the information out there. So. Let's uh let's kind of pick up where he's leaving off until he's uh, ready to come back. Boom! There you go. And again, guys, uh, for those that are watching the video, if you need to reach out to the Yuma Dynamo, he said already the Line app is going to be one of the ways to go. But make sure you go ahead and check out his uh, Twitch stream at twitch.tv forward slash the Yuma Dynamo. Boom! That is it. I believe we are done. Thank you all for tuning in. It's a pleasure to make these videos for you as always. It's your boy Childish and the Yuma Dynamo with Childish Plays. Checking out. Take care, and we'll see you next time, guys. We're out. Yeah, buddy.